I'm Kristen Denny Chambers, clarinetist, composer, and founder of Clarinet Playground. This is video number 24 out of 40, going through all of the etudes in Finger Fitness Etudes Book 2 with some little tips and tricks to help you as you get started with the music. This one is for Balancing Act. Balancing Act is dedicated to Anthony McGill. Clarinetist Anthony McGill is one of classical music's most recognizable and brilliantly multifaceted figures. He serves as the principal clarinet of the New York Philharmonic, that orchestra's first African-American principal player. Hailed for his trademark brilliance, penetrating sound, and rich character by the New York Times, as well as for his exquisite combination of technical refinement and expressive radiance from the Baltimore Sun, McGill also serves as an ardent advocate for helping music education reach underserved communities. McGill was honored to take part in the inauguration of President Obama, premiering a piece by John Williams alongside violinist Itzhak Perlman, cellist Yo-Yo Ma, and pianist Gabriela Montero. McGill appears regularly as a soloist with top orchestras around North America, including the New York Philharmonic, Metropolitan Opera, Baltimore Symphony, San Diego Symphony, and Kansas City Symphony, and is a favorite collaborator with many chamber ensembles that I will list down below in the notes. A graduate of the Curtis Institute, McGill previously served as the principal clarinet of the Metropolitan Opera. He serves on the faculty of the Juilliard School, the Curtis Institute of Music, Bard College's Conservatory of Music, and the Manhattan School of Music. I've heard Anthony McGill play over the years, and I've seen him from a great distance, but I had the opportunity to first meet him just a few months before the pandemic hit. He came through Tulsa and also traveled to Oklahoma State University, where he did a master class. I was able to attend that class and I got to meet him afterwards. It was a wonderful experience. He was so gentle, so humble, and looks you right in the eyes when he talks to you. He's just a very genuine and warm person. I'm very, very glad I got to meet him in person. Following the death of George Floyd, Mr. McGill started the Take Two Knees hashtag initiative. It was very touching and moving, and I think many classical musicians and just general public needed to see that and needed to really start listening to the stories of African Americans and how their lives are in the United States even now. When I think about Anthony being principal clarinet of a major orchestra and being an African American, I think about how difficult that must be to have this literal balancing act in his life, you know, being this classical musician, but also embracing his heritage and his identity and how difficult that must be, and how he may feel like he's walking a tightrope all of the time. I think of this more of a tribute and appreciation for what he has done and what he has put himself through so that he can be an image for other young African-American musicians and just general community to have an African-American hero in this position. Let's take a look at the music. At the bottom of each page in this book, you'll find one or two practice tips. For this one, we have a supple, flexible embouchure is needed to maintain the soft volume and achieve smooth register connections. And then along with that, feel free to be expressive within the sempre piano marking, but hold true to the quiet and distant character of the music. We'll go over that here in a little bit. At the top of each page, you'll find two finger drills. These are very critical. Make sure you're spending time here. You can mess with the rhythm and try different combinations of things. Um, and if there's an option, you can try different fingerings. For this one, it's pretty straightforward, but really want to spend some time there making sure you're comfortable with these drills because this is what's folded directly into the music. So for this one, these drills are all about coordinating really well with your right and left hand. And then I think of while I'm lifting, I lead with the highest finger. And when I'm closing my fingers down, I lead with the lowest finger. So as we go from G to C sharp, we're lifting the entire right hand, and at the same time, we need to put the left pinky down for the C sharp. So you wanna to try to coordinate that move. As you lift, you're placing the left. And then you come back, and you have to coordinate it just right, and you'll know if something's a little off, you'll get a little squeak if you do this early, or you'll get a little note in between if you do it late. And um, when I look at the second one, this one's especially helpful with my second tip here. When I go from G to D, I'm lifting all the fingers of the right hand and I'm lifting one finger of the left hand and it can be really easy to misfire that. And then you get all kinds of notes in between. So I'm gonna actually lead with my ring finger of my left hand when I'm lifting. So I'm going to imagine that one goes first, even though really they're all gonna move together. But if I imagine that one leading, 
I'm less likely to get the little scale all in between, right? And then when I'm putting my fingers down, so if I'm on the D, I'm going to lead with my ring finger of my right hand and think of that one landing first. And you can literally do that practice leading, and then when you lift, you can practice leading with the lift, lead with the lift, and that's more of like a psychological thing, so it kind of tricks you into making sure you're playing really evenly. For the style and character of this etude, it's andante with patience and poise. Make sure you're playing andante in 4-4 four, four time, so somewhere around 70 to 76 for the quarter note. It takes loads of patience and poise to connect registers at Sempre Piano. So you really have to focus on all of your fundamentals. Everything has to be working for this to happen. And one thing that you can try is start by playing this Sempre Piano uh, section mezzo forte, something that you know you can achieve and you get a good sound and you connect your registers really well and then try to play it softer the next time and then softer the next time and see just how softly you can play and still connect registers and still avoid that little bump in the sound. And that is one challenge that we as clarinetists are constantly working to refine. The middle section also allows for a fuller and a richer sound. You may choose to start there first, and that way you're playing with a big, robust sound, you're getting all your notes to speak really well for you, and then you could go back to the beginning and work on the sempre piano. <laughs> When we take a look at rhythm, we're really looking at some fundamental rhythms here. So we have constant sixteenth notes, dotted eight sixteenths, eighths, quarter notes, and dotted quarter notes. And what you can do with the dotted rhythms is you can always subdivide those. So if I look here at measure two, the F dotted eighth to sixteenth, I can play three F sixteenth notes on that F dotted eighth note, and that helps me to really feel where I'm going to place that last D sixteenth note. I'll play this first example with subdividing and then playing. As we look at measure five, we have more complex rhythms that are involved. We get the eighth notes, we get the dotted eighth notes, the sixteenths. We even get the dotted quarter note in there. So there's a little bit more going on rhythmically here, and you can always subdivide that stuff too. So I'll play from measure five with subdividing and then as written. Now we'll take a look at some areas for your focus. So connecting registers really is the main goal of this etude, and doing it quietly adds another level of challenge to it. This is something we're constantly working on as clarinetists. We want to hide that register shift. We don't want anybody to know about this little flaw on the clarinet. So we're constantly working to make sure that is as smooth as possible. So uh, like I mentioned before, you can try it a little bit louder at first and then work to make your dynamics softer. What I like to do is at the beginning, I'll use my right side pinky for that B, and it kind of helps me anchor a little bit better. And then when I get down to measure five, I use pinky pinky B. That's the one where I play C on the right, and then the B on the left, and I play them together. That's pink, what I call pinky pinky B, and that helps much better down at measure five. We also want to really involve the upper lip. So those of you who play double lip already, you're going to be way ahead of the game as far as this connection is concerned. But when we really involve that upper lip, if you're a single lip player, it helps to warm up the sound. It helps to connect things more. Just think of pulling that down. It doesn't necessarily have to be under your teeth, but really make contact with the top of the mouthpiece. And that will really help you make a smoother transition as you cross over into the second register.
In the middle section, we can have a fuller sound. So take advantage of that, and that will provide more contrast for the opening and closing sections. In this middle section also, we have some chord changes. They can be a little awkward, so look ahead for that once we involve the C sharp and the F sharp into the mix. I like to do things where I'll repeat over and over, and I'll mess with the rhythms. So I'll do a little bit of that to show you some things that you can try too. First, I'll start with just simple repetition, playing each measure twice. Now I'll mess with the rhythms a little bit. I'll do long, short, short, long, and then I might do long, long, short, 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 long, long. I also like to do long and then three shorts, so it's like a long note and then a triplet. There are all kinds of things you can do to mess with the rhythm. And then when you go back to play the, the basic rhythm that's on the page, for some reason it's easier. It's just like a magical brain trick. So it's a really great practice tool. <laughs> At measure 16, you can work on this poco writ that leads to the breath. It's really important to set up the breath so that we avoid any kind of cut in the music so that there's no abrupt stop. It's just like slowing down gradually, like coming up to a yield sign when you're driving and then picking it right back up. <laughs> Towards the end in measure 25, we have a two measure repeat. Take this repeat every time. This basically was just me saving space on the page, otherwise I would have written it out. So it is a good repeat, play it twice, and you could even get away with playing it three times, and what that does is it helps create balance in the phrasing. And you might question, well, if I can play it three times, then why can't I just play it one time? Well, you, trust your ear. If you only play it once, it just feels off. So you could do it two times, you could do it three times, whatever floats your boat. And then of course that leads right into measure 27 where we have this crescendo and retard towards the end. So you can work on pacing and figure out how you want to do that. And now for some final thoughts on this etude. Balancing Act will challenge all of your fundamentals as you work to play smoothly and quietly while connecting registers. This is an ongoing task that we must address on a regular basis. It's a lot like walking a tightrope to find just the right balance of air usage, flexible but stable embouchure, reliable tongue position, and firm but gentle fingers. And these things all seem to contradict each other, but we do have to find the right balance to make it work. There are metaphors galore when we think about this task and relate it to somebody like Anthony McGill, who is constantly in the spotlight, working to maintain his own balancing act in the classical music world. Enjoy playing this one. To listen to a beautiful recording of this etude and all other etudes from this book, head over to my website, clarinetplayground.com. Trevor Stewart has recorded all 40 etudes beautifully, and they are available for purchase there on my website. Feel free to join us in the Clarinet Playground group on Facebook where we play and post for each other. And head over to my website at clarinetplayground.com for more fun music and books. Thank you so much. <laughs>